Welcome back, everyone, to Blades and Blasters. This is Demogate. This is episode 23 of the Vagabond Campaign. I am Rogue, the GM this evening. Also, the creator of the game. If you want to check it out, check out ArcanumSyndicate.com. Um, I'm probably going to be doing some uh, handmade map giveaways coming up. So, subscribe to the newsletter on the website. Maybe you can win a map of hell, which is created and inked in blood and written on the flesh of humans. Tonight we have playing with us Matt as Emmy, a human monk, Aki as Denatriu, a dark elf scout, Effervescent as Dre, an elf bard, and Emma is playing Peef, a goblin mutant dryad. It was a bowmaster. Pop you guys over here to no, not that one. Do a couple of flashback scenes. Um, because we we skipped ahead a little bit and uh, a few of the other players didn't get to play past few days so we're gonna find out what they were doing as well but um if you're cool with it we can start with this scene where emmy goes and visits kalim the red all right uh, i can see the tokens but i can't see if there's like a picture oh there it is oh i was gonna say <laughs> Might be this huge amount of ridiculousness on this page. <laughs> There's like 400 images. Oh my god. Oh! The days of the caravan's visit to Northwater are nearly at an end. The 19th will be coming soon, and many of the people of the caravan get ready for the long journey. It'll be a long road for this time. No more cities for many weeks. Many are worried about this danger. The cult, it seems, has been eradicated, for the most part. The vigilant that remain have moved into the Church of the Maker, and now they're working with Norgar to guard that place and continue their work hunting down what remains of the Elder Eye within Northwater. Uh, for this first scene, though, we uh, fade in it's, uh, in the night in the Tower of Kalim the Red uh, at the Temple of the Eternal Fire, where Emmy has gone to meet with him about a gift. Um, we'll say as you're walking in, Emmy, uh, um, you've been brought in by one of the guards, probably, uh, uh probably Goliath, the, uh, the dark-skinned human that you, that you, uh, fought with before in the tower. Uh, he led you in, and he stands guard at the door, we'll say, as, as, uh, you see some students gathered around a, a fire, speaking quietly. Uh, and their teacher watches them as they go over intricate thaumaturgical studies. And uh, and you notice Kalim the Red is standing near one of the archways, looking out over the city and out over the, the great harbor of North Water. And uh, he smiles as you step in and go ahead and take it away. So this is right after we had invaded that other temple, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so I would say Emmy looks uh, not super beat up or anything like that, but she did sustain some damage. So there's still some deeper like cuts and new bruises that are forming on her arms and on her hands. And she has rewrapped her knuckles at this point because she usually might split them open uh, when she attacks someone from time to time. But she walks in and sees Kaleem, regards him with a bit of a head nod, and 
As she makes her way over, her feet kind of lightly padding against the stone floors, she comes over and looks across the city in the same direction that Kaleem was looking out. She looks to him, looking a bit downwards, and says, Hey, um, thank you again for doing this for me. It means a lot. It is not a problem at all, not compared to what you have done for me. <laughs> well, uh, she smiles a bit and says, well, I, I want you to know that we uh, dealt with the other cultists as well. The ones that were at the uh, slaughtered lamb. All the ones who were there are dead now as well. So, hopefully that you won't be able to uh, hopefully they won't bother you anymore, at least for a while. She gives them a bit of a smile, or big gap tooth that she has, if a part of her mouth showing. He smiles in return, he says, I have heard about this already. The news has reached me, and I am happy to hear of it. Which... <sighs> Which just makes me wish to hire you for this quest even more. You have further proved that you are more than capable of guarding such an artifact. Have you talked to the others about the inquiry about taking the eye to the west? Emmy shakes kind of a deep breath and nods looking straight towards Kazim, her demeanor fading from more of a, a happy one to very serious. She says, unfortunately, I, I've talked to the rest of my people. We... Unfortunately, we can't. As much as we want to take this out of your hands, there are there are people on the caravan who would be put into too much danger if we took it with us. And as much as we're capable of dealing with whatever comes, they're not. And we don't want to make them into collateral damage. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that we can't take it. I, I really am. He frowns and he nods as he looks out over the city again. Uh, you can tell he's a... Uh, you can tell it bothers him, but he he continues to, you know, remain pleasant. And he says, it is a very dangerous thing, I ask. So it is all right. No worries at all. Uh, and please, what you came for here, and he goes into his satchel and pulls out a scroll. You can see his signet ring on there, the uh, symbol of the star, the, the fire, outlining it, little squiggly lines come away from the, the, the circle. He says, um, he says, uh, you have someone who can cast it for you? She extends a hand towards him and says, Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they can cast it for me. I mean, I'm obviously not great with magic at all, so... But I've, I've got people that I can rely on to help me. And I do not mean to presume, but uh, you can write with quill and ink. She seems to perk up a little bit and she nods excitedly and says, yeah, yeah, I can, I can write. <laughs> he smiles and he says, very good. Ah, you are a, you're a monk. Yeah. You have trained for many years. Yeah, quite a few years. It, it never stops. It's uh, a constant training, more or less. That's good then. When you are ready. And he hands you back the buckle as well. Uh, it seems 
untouched, you know. Um, he says, uh, it served my magic well, and you should be able to contact whoever you need to. You write the words upon the paper, and your friend will cast a spell, and the message will reach whoever you need to send it to. Uh, do not be alarmed, though, if a bird comes and lands on your shoulder. Hand the note to the bird. Emmy nods and she'll take the, the scroll, the belt, and put the scroll away, and the belt back around her waist. Her, uh, her pants were kind of sagging a little bit, just like barely kind of gripping onto her hips, but she reattaches it and sidles him up a little bit because they fit better. And she says, thank you again. Um, I, I will let you know, I... This might be more of a question for uh, Ilar, but there are some people who are, I think, also looking into the eye. Uh, some elves, I think. And she pauses for a moment. Um, can I roll an intelligence check to try and remember what they were called? Yes. Because I don't remember, and I'm going to assume that Emmy's having a struggle remembering as well. I would say, even for Emmy, it'd be like target number six. Okay. <laughs> hey! Boom. So yes. that was a, uh, the elf's name. I think you... I think you got it from him. Uh, I got at least uh, the order. Like, I know that. It much. was definitely an elf from the Church of Divinities. The, uh, yeah, I the think Cathedral that's a, of Divinities. I yeah. think that's about all that Emmy remembers. This is all I remember. So she says, um, there was an elf from the, the Church or the Cathedral of Divinities that uh, was asking about the eye as well. So, I, I don't know much about them. I, I didn't get all the details. I just know they were asking about it. So, um, yeah, I, I would watch out for someone trying to steal it. That's an elf. Maybe. And uh, he seems to know, like you can just read on his face. He seems to know exactly who you're talking about at, at that moment. Like, uh his eyes kind of brighten up and he smiles and he says ah yes uh, we have uh, not agreed so much over the years uh, the order wishes to own the eye themselves they think they could take better care of it uh, thus priest uh, was his name Aldarin Emmy seems to shrug a little bit, uh, shoulders heaving, and she looks a bit confused and says, I, I honestly don't remember. They started speaking in uh, some other tongue, and I just walked away. Ah, no matter. Uh, well, thank you very much. And if you need anything else, uh, please, you may, you may return any time you wish. She smiles at that and says, Thanks. It was, uh, it was really nice meeting you. Um, sorry again. And she gives him a bit of a head nod before she turns around and will head out, head back to the inn. All right. With a new scroll to call her brother. All right. Next scene, um, I wanted to do Dre, the Dre scene, uh, because Dre, um, missed the festival, and I know that Dre was probably partying somewhere for the festival. What do you think, Dre? Probably. You think working, maybe? about the festival. Okay, the festival was, um on the 15th of Sindagden, my compatriots. And it was, uh, <laughs> and it was a, it was a big party called, uh, the high feast. And, uh, basically the queen came out, she made a speech 
about no no mouths should no stomach should go hungry and stuff like that. Every mouth should get to eat food for the night. So um, they they paid basically all the taverns and inns and merchants and stuff that uh, could produce food to and basically covered it. It was covered by the kingdom cost for food and drink and everybody to be able to eat and drink that night so there was a lot of uh, uh, probably carousing and debauchery so mm -hmm. um, lots of uh, lots of lots of places for bards to make some money too oh, oh. he definitely would this is the wrong that's the wrong one sorry <clears throat> so um uh Would uh would Dre have been like uh, making money that night for the most part? You think? Making money and then getting slashed. Absolutely yeah. smashed. Okay, cool. So, um, go ahead and would you have done the uh, your used your ability to like. Uh, gain reputation and stuff like that and saga points for everybody or oh yeah hell yeah he would okay cool you, you... just read over that again because I forget what I'm supposed to draw. I think it's <laughs> tall tales and it is there's another one now that you add to um there's tall just... tales I gotta skill check the number five so that's with my singing, I believe, right? Or storytelling. Nope. Story. Wait. Probably storytelling. Uh, storytelling, yeah. So a bard rolls a 12 on the storytelling. The tail involves four adventures each. Each get to. And then Tavern Song. Yeah, and that's the one that gives you so all Saga points. Okay. So that one is either a music skill check or a singing skill check, or both. So. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you do a singing one for that one. That's cool. All right, so I have to do storytelling and then singing. Yeah. The storytelling, and then you just divide up some reputation points real quick for everybody. You can take the extra ones. Uh, I'm going to stack on five more on top of it, whatever you roll. So five and add it. Uh, so. Target number of five, does that make it? If it's a five? It does. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we. We have five to distribute amongst ourselves. <laughs> so everybody would get six. Six reputation you can put on your character right now. And then go ahead and do your singing one. And then everybody would get a point for that. Oh. Uh, oh, it's not rating Three two. saga each. Three saga each. Everybody gets three saga and six reputation. Everybody can add those. Thank Man, you. you should play one more song exactly. <laughs> <laughs> can I just give? Can I just give Dana one of my saga? Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Totally there cool. you go. No, you don't have to. It's yours program. now. Too bad. <laughs> she wants to she's she's uh she's feeling like she's got two more than two i have more than so much else. i have 325 saga oh my god yeah that's pretty good <laughs> 327 oh, totally that, that's totally cool and oh okay so during uh, that night um this was All right. So during that night when you're playing, um, you do notice Kit again in the background uh, of the crowd watching you. If everybody remembers Kit and knows who Kit yes. was, 
Who is Kit? Wait. Kit I'll is the woman who we <laughs> we killed her son because he was a were bear. Um, oh yeah. And, and then, then her uh, fiance was yeah. murdered by were bears. That was her. And sacrifice. Well, they're sacrificed to were bears by up, Skogs. Yeah. yeah. Kit Fisto. <laughs> Kit Fisher. <laughs> she seemed like she was latching on to uh, Dre during the during the during the journey here to Northwater. She was kind of invited, right? Yeah. And then um, I think she got the hint, maybe, or maybe she felt it uh, on her own that she wanted to like give Dre space, you know. So she didn't want him to feel uncomfortable, perhaps. Um, I don't know if that's how you felt about it or not, but um, well, that's what it. That's what it seemed like uh, she was acting like, anyway. But um, after, after you play, uh, I'm gonna say you see her uh, in the crowd. Would you? What do you want to do here? He'll, um, he'll go up to the bartender and, and order two drinks and approach Kit, hand her one of the drinks, and ask her. So how, how have you been? Oh, I've been all right. How have you been? Quite well, quite well. It seems I've roused the crowd. I, I haven't seen you in here much. Um, you usually stay near the in, in the first helmet, right? You usually play over there. Uh, for the most part, yes. But, you know, with the festivities today, I'll change it up a bit. Is this where you frequent? Yes. Um, and this place is called the Shield Maiden, just so you know. Um, okay. You've been in here before, but I, I think I've changed the picture a couple times. But um, she says, uh, um, are you heading back there to play again tonight? Likely so. Well, the I, night is young. She smiles and she says, um, And are you leaving with the caravan again when they leave on the 19th? Oh, I, I do plan for this, yes. Uh, will you be joining us? I've... And she looks towards the fire, uh, looks maybe a little sad and says, um, I was thinking perhaps I would stay here in Northwater, try to make a life here. But you catch her like peeking over at you to try to maybe gauge your reaction. He nods a, yeah, he nods a little bit thoughtfully, uh, takes a swig of his drink and then looks over at her curiously. It's not because of the company, is it? No. Well, maybe a little. It's strange to travel with the ones that killed your son. Not that I blame them, that it's... They were protecting themselves. Oh. Well, I have to admit I'm surprised seeing you give them. Excuse them. They were quite angry, and understandably so. I don't know if I've fully forgiven them or not. But I should try, yes? I believe you need to do what is best for your healing. And in time... Will either forgive them or just move on. But nothing says you have to if that is not in your heart. I 
my heart. And uh, she kind of crosses her arms and she says, um, So, uh, do you share an ale with me? Absolutely. Cheers. And he'll reach up to, or pull his mug out to, like, clink against hers. She smiles. Takes a big, almost finishes half of it. And, uh, smiles and says, um, how about a dance? Oh, well, I suppose we better take advantage of your, uh, dancing fees if you drink like that. <laughs> and, uh, she smiles and grabs your hand and tries to drag you out on the floor. Well, he'll come, he'll come and, and dance with her. Nothing, um, it's, you know, a lively kind of dancing, nothing promiscuous. Yeah. And, no, uh, no, for dancing, I don't have it. <laughs> and, uh, I don't think, let me see, actually, before I roll anything. If she rolls low, I'm going to say something. Oh, Lord. Okay. She seems to uh, spend spend the night with you, just like not spend the night with you, but she seems to like spend her time with you. Uh, it's a cordial type of, you know. She she remains happy and and sweet, yeah, and really but... doesn't try to drag you in for a kiss or anything, but. But uh, you can tell there's definitely like uh, a little twinkle in her eye every once in a while. Um, at least trying to gauge your interest, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, after, if you don't try anything, yeah. After some dancing and, uh, you know, getting more drinks, having a good time, he'll eventually. Um, Broach the subject. Now, Kit, I've noticed you've been looking at me a certain way, and that's quite all right. I, I did want to say I, I do appreciate the friendship that we have, and given what you have been through, um, it. I've felt that it is not appropriate to pursue, but also I have developed feelings for a companion of mine, and I just wanted you to know. Oh. Yes, um, Lally, I appreciate that and she looks very awkward and almost embarrassed and uh grabs her ale immediately to hide behind it and uh says who is this friend of yours uh he he laughs a bit well <laughs> you're not going to harbor any grudges are you well that knife you gave me sure is sharp, and, uh, and then she she laughs uh, kind of awkwardly, and she's like, "Oh, it's a joke. No, I'm not going to." No, well, um, not sure if you remember the gangly fellow with the white hair. <laughs> Um, the elf. No, the one with the really thick accent. Oh, the, the man. The, the elf man. <laughs> yes, yes. Um... Oh, you, oh. She like starts to just get it. <laughs> you can see it like sinking in. 
Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, I didn't see it coming, but I wasn't looking for it. It just kind of happened. But I, I feel that now that it is quite evident, um, and um, you are a good person, and I felt it was only right. Oh. She seems a little bit relieved, actually, and smiles and says, uh, Thank you for saying that. Well, then, here is to you and your friend. Thank you. And he'll drink to that, and then he'll go, And here's two new beginnings for you. If you d do decide to stay, this place is quite adventurous. Smiles, says it is, and looks towards the fire. And I think we'll end that scene there. We got Denatrio. What was Denatrio doing? He didn't get to do the festival either, did he? Unless you're not there. Oh. Are you made it? Yes. <laughs> All right. What do you think Denatrio was up to? Oh, I immediately hit it back off. Sorry. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm gonna uh, put you guys back in the. Uh, I'm gonna put you guys in the first helmet. You probably would have been there, huh? Yeah, it makes sense. I think uh, you would have probably hung around for the festival a little bit, but I mean, mostly sticking to the streets rather than the uh, actual taverns. Uh, kind of always moving around. He's been kind of getting a little bit more used to the crowds that he used to have a bit more anxiety about. Um, and he's been able to blend in a little bit better. So he's kind of practicing slipping through and just enjoying himself while trying not to deal with too many people at a given time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say uh, I want to do a scene where you and Ineth run into each other yeah. before we go I'm down papers. from the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh lord <laughs> I just need some water Is. <laughs> and so um, so probably you've been cruising the streets um, and uh, by the end of the festival maybe uh, uh, does he stay in here or does he stay in a wagon um, for now with the whole festival and everything it'd probably be easier to stay in the tavern actually uh, cool this night so, so yeah he's probably fairly worn down from the the travels although he doesn't mind it too much and uh, probably of course comes right on in and is getting something to cool off yeah perfect and if I, uh, yeah she comes down from uh, the room where she dragged Emmy away to and uh, uh, music still going on. If it's playing for you guys, I don't know if it's playing. Good chat. Oh, there we go. It's like chatting, and then like the the music downstairs in a tavern. There we go. Let's see. Boom. She comes flying over to you, and uh, quickly, you know. Uh, sprightly steps and uh, and she bumps into you uh, already got already got an ale for you um, that she probably took off of somebody else's table when they weren't looking 
and <laughs> she's like, "Oh, look, I got you this." Oh, Ennis, uh, how's it going? It is going quite well. And how are you? Fine enough. I've just been wondering. It's uh, a little quite tiring out there. You know how it gets during these festivals. And she seems to be studying you really closely, um, and then she smiles and says, um, "I got you a present. It is." From the bathhouse. Um, I didn't pay for it, but I'm having it designed and I will give it to you soon. And also I wanted to let you know that that information that you wanted you wanted me to leak it out about the book of resurrections. Oh, yes. I did find someone who initially owned it, I found out about uh, a man named Amal the Seeker, uh, supposedly a dangerous man that lives here in the city still. Really? My. So. Well. And he, his brow furrows a little bit as he thinks on it. You know, the implications of that. Yeah. She, uh, she immediately just keeps going on about it, though. And she's like, um, uh, so he sold the book to someone named Oramus. Of course, we know that is one of the cult higher-ups that was killed recently. But um, now someone who is very interested in procuring the book is supposed to meet us tomorrow night. A man named Thazul. Thazul? Or, wait, no, Thazulu. That was his name. Mm. Uh, anyway, he's interested in purchasing the book, if you still wish to look into this. I suppose we might as well. It's, uh, I was thinking of doing some hunting, but honestly, with all the work we've been doing in town, I've uh, stocked up quite a bit, so... Yes, yes. And you shouldn't spend all of your time out in the woods. I, I mean, while we're here, why not um, hang out together? Fair enough. <laughs> what do you want to do then? I think uh, he kind of looks up towards the stairs a little bit. Uh, were you busy or...? <laughs> and then she looks a bit, um... Like uncomfortable at first, and then she says, uh, well, I know I've been spending a lot of time with, uh, Emmy, but, um, you know, I mean, we, sh we should have plenty of time, right? Yeah, of course. It's good. It's good. You haven't been that way since, uh, well, <laughs> for a long time. It's good. Whatever happened to Delius? Where is he? and the little ones. Oh, I'm not sure if they've been uh, out and about, I'm assuming. Or oh, if yes. they've been sticking close to the caravan. Oh. The, uh, uh, and as she does, like, jumping from subject to subject and running over her own words, she's like, uh, Dazulu. Um, he was actually an old thief out, uh, from Ikebor. It's a land far, far to the south. Uh, he's... Uh, we're meant to meet him in uh, this place called Long Shallow. Long Shallow, it's in uh, the Grave Ward. Long Shallow. All right, I'll check it out ahead of time. All right. Uh, yes, the Grave Ward is uh, to the north of here. Uh, uh, be careful. Many thieves, watch your pars. Of course, always, you know me. And, uh, I, I think, um, I'll have that gift for you by tomorrow. Right then, I'm quite curious now. <laughs> you 
sure you don't want to tell me what it is? Well, would you prefer, um... I should have asked you this, I suppose. A bracelet or a necklace? Oh. Thinks about it. I suppose either would work quite well. Though a necklace would probably be more out of the way. But they both sound quite nice, actually. She smiles and nods. Good then. <laughs> and she takes a sip and last one, peefers. Huh? Keep us fucking napping. <laughs> What's up? It's my turn. Yeah. Peefers, you could we could be in the same place here. That makes more sense. Um, you were meant to go on a little journey with uh, Helena. I was. But so. then uh, that got interrupted because the island was further away than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to say, like, maybe Helena waited for you, you know, so when you got back uh, and then you guys could still go together. Okay. I mean, if, um, so the base... Um, probability of success is 30%. And go ahead and roll two skills that you okay. think would be good for sneaking around. Probably. Is there something like stealth and concealment? Pretty Those much. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to add the results to 30. Okay. For a complete probability of success... So you're at 44? Yeah. Hold on, let me see. One sec. I think my stealth is a d20. Or you could do stealing. Let me see. I don't think she has stealing. We'll do stealth. So that's an extra 30%. I just doubled it, baby. Nice. So you have a 60% probability of success on this quest. And go ahead and roll a percentile. And you want to get 60 or under. Helena. Yeah, I'm going to roll for her, too. Do we not add her checks? No, we're not going to add them to yours. Nice. That, that's cocked. Yeah, it's got bad. All right, roll a d6. Six is bad. One is not so not so big of a deal. Ooh, right in the mids. Closer to one though. All right, so that night, Helena and Peef, uh, they were able to. Uh, follow this band of criminals that she had been talking about. Uh, they were running narcotics and poisons. That is what she had originally thought to some guild house or something and selling the wares on the black market. So um, that night when you follow them, you find out that it's coming from a ship called the Paragon and they're leading to a warehouse in the black market uh, down on this place called Fiddler's Alley. So it looks like they brought narcotics off of the boat, maybe a few barrels of some kind of liquid. Uh, it's labeled like ale or whatever, but it's probably something else. Uh, and you notice they were taken to this warehouse. Uh, so it'd be up to you, but uh, if you guys wanted to go do it, um, uh, you could either go to the ship and try to investigate the ship, or you could go to the warehouse and try to investigate that, or whatever. Um, okay. But that night, according to your rolls, uh, it gets broken up, and uh, you get out and end up being chased away by the guards, uh, which you do make it away. But um, uh, 
uh, and they probably didn't get a good look. You don't think they got a good look at you guys? I mean, you could look like two children, you know, in the dark, running running away down the street. So you're hoping they didn't get a good look. Um, but go ahead and roll um, your uh, your your reputation roll, your uh, uh, glory. Is that, um, that one's on under, under reputation. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you got it up there. No. Okay. Cool. So you're hoping that they didn't get a good look at you, and you don't think they did. But finishing that up, now we're going to continue, and it's the seventeenth where you guys are all going to be together, meeting up in the main market. How many days has it been? This will be one more day after. Oh, okay. So it's the seventeenth. Well. So my arm's back. Is it healed? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, your arm's good. And you heal two d six at night, right? Uh, two d six. Yeah, if you get some food and good sleep. Okay. And then it's one gold per HP to get healed, right? Yeah, if you go to like the apothecary. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think it's one silver. That was one gold. Is it one gold? I'm pretty sure it's one. Last time it was one gold. Wait, was it one gold? I think it was one gold. It was a lot. I, I didn't write this Arcane game. Arcane and Sing up. Syndicate. I'm assuming yes. it's one gold. Um. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. It was. I thought it was a copper. No, it's but... not. It's definitely not that cheap. Um. Let me look at Firing it. services. I just used a, a potion. Healer, one copper per XP. Per XP? Yeah. XP? I'm just or, looking or at HP. HP. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, so ten is. You're right. Ten is one silver. Okay. Okay. Oh so, well. Two, three, four, five. Gonna do that then. Six. So I'll go to six. Yeah, Fifty-six. Two. I'll go up to seventy-two. Four. So it's one copper each. So I went from 20. 70. Five silver. Hey, nice. Oh. Bad. Yeah, so on the 17th during the day, um, we'll have you guys all meet up in the, uh, the market area again. And. You guys are free to do whatever you want, but uh, for this scene, we'll say it is a busy day. And people are buying all over the marketplace. <laughs> wow. Oof. It's okay. Oh, was that chi? That was chi. Um, I, oh. I mean, maybe I like regain chi and then I just... Fucked it aside. I was gonna um, say you were you were very busy. It makes sense. It's second day in a row. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's valid. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll my berry shard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the of it. Berry shard it out. I did the thing of it. All right. So yeah, you guys can know. Uh, RP this scene in the marketplace or how you guys run into each other. Literally. <laughs> Peef is walking around um, kind of distracted by all of the people around looking at the various wares. Um, she's probably eating some small like nuts or something that she got. And as she's looking around, not really paying attention uh she accidentally bumps into the legs of Ytrelon, um and looks up at him oh hi oh, oh hello he um Ytrelon looks a little um a little bit tired uh from all the festivities, probably staying up all night partying. And 
uh, he, uh, his, his hair is just slightly disheveled, but otherwise he looks, and his, uh, of course, his one eye is, it, oh, <laughs> sorry, I just read, um, but yeah, uh, his, his one eye is, is kind of, like, half-lidded, he's still kind of accepting that the day is going on. <sighs> Did I run into you? Or did you run into me? Um, I ran into you. You look tired. It was a quite a riveting night. Why don't you sleep more? Well, then I can't party more. But if you sleep more, doesn't mean that doesn't that mean that you can party later? No, it means that I miss out. But there's not really any parties happening right now. Well, yes, that is why I'm here. So that you can start a party? Would you like to? No. Oh, alright. No party right now. I had other things I wanted to do. A busy day? Maybe. Do you want to come? Um, sure. Cool. We're going to go rob some people. No, no, no. How, how, how about this? Leave it a surprise. Okay. I'll um, just follow. We're not going to go rob some people. Well, all right. We're going to rob. No, I said we're not going to do that. <laughs> not going to rob people, but we are. Yeah, come with me. Why are we robbing? We're not. You said you Why wanted it to be a surprise. The surprise is, is past. What? Do you no. know what a black market is? Yes. Are we robbing the black market? Yeah! <laughs> this is exciting. All right. But you gotta... We gotta be sneaky. Hmm. I think I can manage. So for that, I think we need some other sneaky people. And she starts looking around like Emmy. And she sees Emmy like in a crowd. And points yeah. towards her. Emmy is kind of standing there. I think she has her arm around Inathai's waist. Um, and she's like looking at some of the like different produce and everything. And she looks to Anathia, uh, and she's like kind of pointing out various produce and says, you know, I think I could grow that in the garden. Um, like if I bought some and I like gouged out the seeds with my fingers, I I'm pretty sure I could grow that. I mean, it tastes okay. I'm not really the biggest fan of, uh, of watermelon myself, but I mean, I could try. Do you like watermelon? She kind of looks down at Athaya. Watermelon. Yeah. And she's looking at it. I don't think I've ever tried this. Well, we're going to. And she, like, pays the person some money, of course. And um, she she picks up the watermelon and has it in her hands. And she, like, looks at it for a moment. Um, she doesn't have a knife or anything. But you see she grabs, like, the ends. And she digs her fingers into either part of the watermelon. And I'd say she twists it um, just hard enough to split it in half. And then she gives one half to Inathia and says, Here. <laughs> She laughs and she takes it. She says, it's so large. You know, it's, uh, I mean, usually people cut it up into pieces, but I mean, I don't have any knives on me. I, and I don't want to punch it into pieces because I don't think that would be, uh, I don't, I don't think it would work. You can cut it though. You need a knife? Uh, 
Hey, Peef. You see, like, Peef standing behind you. Yeah, she, like, turns around. Like, she seems a bit surprised at first. Like, jumps back. And she just smiles at Peef and says, Hey, Peef. She's, like, holds out a knife. Oh, it's thanks. a bone knife. She'll take the just knife. Very she'll take the knife and uh, she'll like cut into some of the um, some of the watermelon that she has in her hands, and then she'll like take the big giant piece of watermelon from Inathia and give her the smaller one, and say, "Here, try it. Uh, if you like it, then I'll I can cut up more." Thanks, Peef. How's it going? I'm good. Do you not? Do you want to not? Rob someone? Well, yeah, I, I don't want to rob anybody. What? This is Great. confusion. Great, you can come with me and Dre. Are we preventing yeah. a robbery? We are not robbing. We're not robbing anyone. I think it's not, it's not true hearing <laughs> everybody talking about, are we robbing someone? We should steal some things. We're not stealing things. And in its being over there, Danatri is like, uh oh. <laughs> and starts kind of walking over. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely morning, nothing morning. to do with the black mark. Oh, hi, Danatri. Is, is everything all right? I heard something about. We're going to stop a robbery? I don't know. Yes, that's what we're going to do. She smiles and she nods towards the. Uh... To not to you. And Abby like looks at Edith <laughs> and she's like, oh, okay, like fully believing her. A hundred percent. She has no idea what's going on. Oh no. <laughs> she's yeah, like, okay. you smirks a bit. <laughs> kind of looks to the <laughs> others as like, if what? <laughs> we need Are we actually people, doing? so this is perfect. Oh. Uh, what for exactly? Is we're not robbing anyone. Just, you can come with me and I'll take you. It's a social It's experience. It's a surprise. Right. Like surprise, yes. Oh. I love surprises. Like, <laughs> would you like to share any of this watermelon with me? Yeah. And me will cut some watermelon. Just a peef? <laughs> Yeah, people take some. Yeah, he's looking at her curiously, especially after saying surprises. He's waiting on what goes on with Peef. Does Peef get a piece? Yeah. No, just a Peef. Yeah, like you said. Sneak Peef. <laughs> it's a tiny Peef. Um, Peef takes the piece and puts it in her mouth and has a pretty neutral expression on her face before like spitting it out back into her hand and she holds her hand out towards Inneth. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want it back. Here, just drop it on the ground, I think. Oh, you don't want it? No, not that piece. Why not? I, I have my own peef right here. <laughs> I mean, we got a peef here too. And she points at a peef. <laughs> and she's gonna try, and she's like, "Oh, it's very juicy. I kind of like it." Good. I mean, like, a, do you want me to grow in the garden? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And she'll still start like digging out the various seeds and whatnot, but she she cuts up some. She'll hand more to Inathia and like hand some out to Dre and Donatrio, or Donatrio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's going to Dana. Um, so she hands some to Dana, uh, and <laughs> she just she just holds the other pieces in her hand. <laughs> She's like, I'm just gonna distribute watermelon today. It's um, very very, um, he uh, he thanks her for his piece and enjoys it, and he kind of looks around for Lar and doesn't see him. Yeah. Um. 
This is so good. Do you not? She looks at Peef and says, um, do you not like it because goblins only eat meat? Um, not all goblins only eat meat. That's a bit of a, um, Is that racist what? thing to say? Yeah, that, that's what he told me. Um, but I only eat meat, yeah. What if there was a watermelon? Then she paused for a moment. She's like, no, that sounds horrible. Never mind. What do you mean? A meter melon? Oh. Yeah, like a watermelon <laughs> made of meat. That's, that's no, no. Isn't that just like a turkey leg? Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess turkeys are just big watermelon birds. <laughs> she starts Turkey, laughing. the watermelons of the bird See, kingdom. Yeah. Rem reminds me of what you turned that cultist into the other day. A turkey? A meat melon. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I did, like, pull his head through someone else's ribs. Wait, so how? <laughs> it was quite disgusting. Yeah. Oh but yeah, you weren't there to see so. it. I think I there's two guys oh, there, and they were like in a row, and basically I punched one through the chest, and I grabbed the other guy's head, and then I ripped it through his chest and like impaled his face on the other guy's ribs. That's pretty cool. I know. It, it a horrible thing to see. I'm sorry, and she like seems so apologetic when she looks at it. I'm sorry, I'll try not to do that anymore. <laughs> she smiles though, and she's like, but it was delightful. When I came around the corner, it was like a child who had created something, and the child says, look what I made. A meat melon. <laughs> 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 it certainly isn't anything I would be expecting to see from a child. Yes, I guess that's true. Wait a second. Ebby looks hard at Ith. Are you calling me a child? No. It was just adorable. Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> She's got watermelon running all down her face. I think Ebby will go over and, like, kiss her face and try to get the watermelon off. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit sexier than and, she means to. Oh my to. god, please roll charisma to see how oh. much you just dog lick her face. She might <laughs> like that. I don't know. What is this episode? I really episode? want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, can just I, start lolling can I, your tongue I'm all I'm going to add face. a plus two because I'm funny and I made a joke. <laughs> so it's a four. <laughs> <laughs> so I not very sexily lick this watermelon off her face, but it's not terrible. Um, I think Peef is, now that she's collected a, a group, she's looking around for uh, Helena. If she happens to be around. Sorry. Yeah, you see Helena over... Um by the old man uh, who's sitting underneath one of the tent flaps. Uh, you can see uh, uh, Faustine over there with uh, Sylvia, Jarl's new addition to the caravan, who seems to be talking and helping her cook. Okay. Peep is going to run up to Helena while Emmy is licking people. Just did it. Um, <laughs> Well, for now, it's just Enneth, but yeah, who knows where say. it's going to go from here. <sighs> Delius isn't here, so... <laughs> Helena, um, turns, uh, after purchasing something from Juarez, and says, um... Hey, did you... Did you get some others to come with us? Yeah, um, I got really sneaky people. They're over there. And Peef points back towards Emmy while she's licking in its face. <laughs> yeah. She licks at Emmy and she sees, you know, the seven foot tall woman. And she's like, 
Is she very sneaky? Yeah! Well, that's good then, because she's... She looks like she could really mess someone up. Yeah, she's really strong and sneaky and talks really well. Um, they want it to be a surprise, though, so they don't actually want to know what we're doing. It's weird. But I told uh, them we're not going to go rob someone. So I was thinking, did you want to go to the warehouse or do you want to go to the boat? Because the warehouse probably just going to have the narcotics, right? That the, that the ship brought in. But uh -huh. the boat might have the money, you know? Like maybe that they're going to take the money back to the people who are buying it. Or yeah. selling it. Um, boats move and warehouses don't, right? So maybe we should go to the thing that moves first. Yeah. She smiles and says, uh, that's what I was thinking too. All right, cool. And, uh, she smiles and, uh, you notice this fellow and this uh, one. Oh, I recognize the other one. Are they both like actor people? Yes, uh, in, they're coming through the uh, the crowd and they almost bump into uh, Ixtrelon. Did I say it right? Yes. Uh, Colas seems like surprised he also has a bottle in his hand and uh looks a bit staggered uh and he's walking with edros who uh who straightens his spectacles on his face and uh, he, he nods to uh uh to you all uh wh who was at the play uh, me P, I mean, I mean, M.E., Ennis, right. uh, L.R. Yeah, the tray was there, too. Yeah, yeah I think it was all of us in the, and all... L.R. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely bumps in, you know, to, um, I guess, where I put them. Yeah, above above you guys. They're closer to you guys. Um, so, um, Kola says, hello. How are you again? Oh, yes, hello. There's another play coming up soon, uh, in uh, uh, three more days, if you wish to come and join. And hopefully this one won't be spoiled by <sighs> miscreants. I believe that depends on when our caravan is set out to leave. I don't exactly. But if we are in town, I would love to come see it. And uh, he smiles and he says, uh, excellent, excellent. Um, and you sang beautifully, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I think it was a bit distracting, but... Yeah, it was. Especially, well, not more distracting than the kiss. And that wasn't supposed to be there. And you see Edros kind of... like, roll his eyes and look away for a second. It was not. Is that so? Yes, but you know, Christos, he has a way of getting whatever he wants. And uh, Edra says, yes, yes, yes. Oh, come, come along now, Colas. Let's, uh, let's go find a, a place to sit down and drink. You do have a pleasant day. And 
Edris drags him off. Ithrilan uh, kind of rolls his one eye. Emil, uh, <laughs> I'll give it the kiss and say, sorry. Um, she's still holding the watermelon in one arm. She says, mm. I don't know what to do with all this watermelon now. Well, let's put it up and... Uh... Put it up where? Mm. On a stand? On my head? How much is left? Uh, she looks down. She's like holding one full half. It's kind of... Her fingers have been in it. She's been digging up the seeds and like putting them into a little cloth pouch and slipping that into another pocket. Um, so it's a bit messed up from her hands and the other one's like a half finish from her cutting into it and giving pieces to people. Uh, a lot. What? She looks over and you kind of see the uh, the overhang over there. You see some children playing around. Look like pretty rough, wearing dirty clothes and stuff. Perhaps we can give it to the poor. Oh yeah, let's do it. Emmy looks very excited, and we'll go over and give the kids some watermelon. All right. Are you guys heading out to the docks then? Sounds like it. How to not yeah. rob people. Yeah, to save people, people yeah. being robbed. People will go back to the group and be like, Okay, come with me. And then okay. she'll start walking off towards the docks. We are going to be so surprised. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, lead the way. Yeah, we're going to be very surprised. Oh my god. I'm going to be the most surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. the docks. There we go. Also, you, you guys have seen, have you, any, any of you seen the new Rick and Morty? No. Because <laughs> the fucking like Aquaman S dude just makes me think of Indralon sometimes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> just sometimes. The Aquaman. <laughs> the, from the, the, what is his name? Like King something. Yeah. Oh god, I can't remember. <laughs> when he does that, <laughs> I'll link it in a second. Go ahead. Everybody got sight there. Yeah. All right, making your way to the docks. No random encounters. Through the city streets, winding around, it takes about an hour to get to this location. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm thinking of a different dock. This one takes a little while. This one is in the northern area of the city. Everything's so far away. Yeah, this is pretty far. <laughs> I'm going to make two rolls. You can see when you get uh, maybe to the merchant's ward as you're heading up towards uh, the Three Penny Palace area. Uh, you have to pass through several different districts. Um, the merchant's ward is where you notice the magistrates' uh, towers and uh, the primary magistrate place. Uh, beyond it, you can see the castle of Harve Girl Keep, um, where the queen lives, and all the rich people in the high ward. You can see all of their rich houses uh, as you pass by that location. Um, and it stares at it for a while as you walk by. Uh, Tanatria kind of washes a little bit as well, the nostalgia of it, but happy to keep moving on. <laughs> and uh, Helena seems to be mumbling something about 
those rich houses. Be nice to go in there once. Maybe check around. She looks over at Peef. Before, yeah. before we leave. That would be cool. Maybe on our last day. Yeah. It was a close one last night. And, um, we were fine. It would be bad to get caught. Are you sure that, um, we should bring all these people? Yeah. Don't, don't, they're all super sneaky, don't worry. They'll be fine. <laughs> so it's probably going to be nighttime by the time you get to this place. Another nighttime raid. Emmy's definitely holding in his hand as it gets darker because she can't see shit once it becomes dark. Oh, yeah. I think as we get closer, Peef will kind of like stop the group and will be like, okay, we're almost there. And now I can finally reveal the surprise. Is it a party? She, she kind of leans in. We're gonna, we're gonna rob the black market. Ooh, uh, Emmy seems to kind of yeah. backtrack a bit. What? I, I thought we were um, saving someone from being robbed. I don't rob that people. That seems like a quite concerning idea. Well, no, but no, do you know what the black market is? It's a he market that looks sells it black and... fabric. <laughs> like, this seemed like a dangerous idea. This is because they both have dealt with the black market before. They know how. How dangerous this is. Uh, yeah. The black market's bad. And so we're just taking things from bad people like we've done before. Helena <laughs> points to the ship. Uh, you can see it out there. Um, it's a pretty big ship. And, uh, and she. Uh, oh, do you guys off site here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and she says, um, it's called the Paragon. They've been bringing in some illegal stuff and trading it in the black market. Uh, um, I mean, they're bad guys, right? <laughs> it, it starts to giggle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're bad. I mean, what, what kind of bad stuff do you mean? I mean... And Helena yeah. looks back and she says, um, well, this stuff's illegal, right? They shouldn't be bringing it in, like narcotics and and uh, fire water and stuff like that. Are are they bringing in like you know slaves or anything like that? Because I mean, I I feel like they're just trying to get by right now on selling things in order to live a better life. I, I don't know. I'm, Emmy seems very uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, it could be slaves. They might have slaves on there. Yeah, I heard they have slaves. <laughs> Make me a charisma <laughs> check, please. Emmy is suspicious. <laughs> She's like, mm, I mean, I need, I need proof first. I need, I can't go off might have, you know. Wait, um, anything on Emmy. the market is criminally acquired. Anything, which also includes slaves, but you have to go through certain venues in order to even be entertained by those specific sellers so it it would be difficult to show you the proof just at a glance okay so so are we gonna beat up slavers then and then rescue people well 
the goal is to not beat up anybody. It's to get in and get out without being seen. Are we going to rescue people, though? Yes. Okay. Definitely. I mean, if we're going to rescue people, then I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. But if... I, I mean, I don't just want to take things, you know? That, that makes me uncomfortable. Well, perhaps... If Peef would be willing to disclose exactly what we are trying to procure. We're trying to take their drugs, right? That was what we were doing. <laughs> um, at the boat, Helena said there might be the gold uh, okay. that they used to buy it. Uh, uh but um, this is just an idea. I mean, she doesn't know that. So, this is the boat that they transport everything with. And so we're going to search it and try to find the people to save. Uh, yeah. There's, and their money. Might and they're on there too. Yeah, there might be money. Okay, so maybe we could give some of the money to the people that we help free? I mean... Yeah! The, the black market isn't yeah. quite like a small cult mm -hmm. when you, you make them angry. Yeah. That's it's why we're not gonna be seen. I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard not to see me. Um, every kind of okay, you're really good at thinking. I'm not that good, to be honest. I just am lucky. Uh, I mean, I, I could keep like what? <laughs> she thinks that. No, I'm, I'm not good at seeing things. I could like stand somewhere while y y you all go and sneak in. And then if you need me, you just yell and then I'll run because I'm, I'm kind of fast. Um, more or less. But uh, I'm not great at sneaking. And it kind of uh, tangles her fingers around Emmy's hand and says, She's not that good at sneaking. Thanks. Sorry, but she's good at punching people. I Maybe am. throwing them off the ship. I'm good at other things, too. <sighs> like what? <laughs> Beef like he's got a smile to the fire. I can just imagine this big dumb smile growing out of his face. Like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Well, you can stay outside. Okay. I guess if you want. Mm -hmm. And then if something bad happens, you can come and help. Okay. She smiles and nods. I'm okay with that. Mm, should I stay with you? Um, Ineth, or she looks to Ineth and says, I mean, it, it's up to you. I, I mean, Denatri is going in. I, I, this is kind of your specialty, right? It's like getting into places like you're super quiet. It is one of my specialties. It is. And I, I wouldn't want to prevent you from using your techniques and, and your special way yeah you know using your hands and stuff uh <laughs> I mean, it might be fun for you i don't know <laughs> she looks over to not show you she says are you going in i he looks like visibly nervous about the whole thing like uh probably a little bit obviously but he kind of looks to her. I suppose it's for the best. I not fond of the idea, but I don't want to leave everyone to do this alone, of course. She gets serious for a second. You can see like the look on her face. Uh when you mention everyone. And um she starts to nod. I don't want any of the others to get hurt. Yes. I'll be careful. Perhaps we should go. 
together then. Pray for the best. Keep an eye on them. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Great. Well, what about you? She looks over to Dre. Is it for the world? Of course I'm coming. You're good at sneaking too, aren't you? Yes. Had to sneak out of a few windows in my time. Oh. My... Oh. Be sneaking out of a Lars now. It'd be quite the drama in the caravan. <laughs> oh. I think he would leave that window open. <laughs> so, invite voyeurs. Well, I'm going to stand out here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, right. if you want to leave a window open, that that's nice. Um, this is. The, yeah. I mean, I'm worried about you all, though. And she kind of turns me. around, looking very concerned. I just don't want you all to get hurt. Don't worry, Ines will get us in, and I'll just scout ahead, and then we can come back and get you once we have a clear path. Okay. Um. Hey. Uh. And she like reaches into one of her. Uh. Let me see here. Reads into her pack and she'll give y'all, you can split it between you. She'll give you three healing potions, just basic ones. Just just in case something happens that I'm, I'm not there in time. I, I just, I just don't want Thank anything you. bad happening to any of you. It'll be all right. Don't, don't okay. worry. All right. I'll make sure. Okay. Uh, any problem? <laughs> just make sure. I mean, I want you all to make it out, but also, especially Ineth, um, for obvious <laughs> reasons. You know, I'll keep her safe. She'll sleep fine. Okay. She'll go over to Ineth and give her a kiss before she heads inside. Says, "You know, don't do anything that I would do. Like run up ahead. Just don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I'm dumb." You're not. Um, yeah. <laughs> she smiles and says, I won't run up ahead. Okay, good, good, good. Well, how are we going to get you to know if we're in trouble? Just some kind Yell? of. Uh, I don't know. I'd call. Uh, make an owl noise? I um, can make three bird calls if you wish. Yeah, just nothing, I guess, in the area. Like, don't sound like a chickadee or anything like that. Wait, are chickadees native? Not here. Okay, then do a chickadee. <laughs> All right. Cool. Then, well, uh, I suppose... Perhaps it is a good thing. It's docked. She looks over at the uh, at the ship over down there. She's like, most of the personnel are probably in the tavern. And she points over to one of the taverns. You can see like this. Um, actually, somebody roll a percentile twice. I've got a name generator right here for mine. All right. Taverns. I got the first number. 98. 98. Someone else. Uh, will. Sure. If you do the next number. The jaded. Penis. <laughs> What's the second number? <laughs> 22. 22. Thank you. Uh, the jaded burrow. Okay. The jaded burrow. <laughs> Why? Sounds like a vajazzled. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly enough, that's exactly what it sounds like. Uh. Uh, 
The bejazzles bejay. That's a good place for a bunch of pirates. It's a good place for a bunch of pirates. Ew, don't go to the jaded burrow. Jade, too, so it's like that slightly moldy looking. Oh, no. no. <laughs> it's the moldy poos. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It'd be great for a whorehouse name. <laughs> right, the multi <laughs> Oh my god. It's all orc <laughs> prostitutes. Oh no. <laughs> Alright. You guys are heading over then. All right, looking at this ship, um, you notice on board, let me see. Uh. Um, does anybody have a way, uh, actually, if you have a, uh, does anybody have a spyglass? I do. Oh, nice. This would be the scout's job, I think. Yeah, I think he will uh, take point. So I think real quick, he'll, you know, have everyone hold off for a second and get a good look of the exterior before anything. Um, so let me... I'm going to spend an SP for take point. So I'll roll my D6, and it is a 1. So it's a plus 1 uh, to my stealth, concealment, observation, listening, and perception checks while on point. Um, and then I'm going to uh, use infiltrate. So I'll burn another SP and it drops the target numbers of all stealth for us by one. Nice for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, attribute and skill checks like uh, stealth, conceal. Uh, and traps for up to 10 in a party. Yeah. Hell yes. Just got to follow my hand signals. Same as my other stuff. And then, of course, uh, let me... I don't need to we'll navigate land for this for trail later, so... Uh, but yeah, so what do, what do I need to roll now? Um, perception to check that. Uh, observation. Yeah, that works. You're kind of like checking out on deck and maybe looking through the portholes of the sides and stuff. So this is with a plus uh, one. Not bad. Nice. You, uh, with that look, you're able to... Uh, um, let me whisper you something real quick. I don't think everybody has view on everybody anymore. Oh, and I do have Trap Hunter, too. Um, which, I didn't think about it, but that would add a D6. I don't know if that would matter here. Because he, he would obviously be making sure he knows if any of the entrances would trigger some kind of, like, a bell or anything like that. Yeah, I'll whisper you something about that. That's a good point. Yeah, I'll burn the frenzy as well for the extra d6 if that's cool. Just to get an idea of yeah. what he would. Well, <laughs> still, death by a thousand cuts, right? <laughs> so that's what you see as you're scoping the ship out with the uh, spyglass. 
Yeah, so Janachu kind of walks off for a couple of moments and heads back to everybody. Uh, this, of course, being with Emmy too, so that they can kind of go over the layout before they actually move in. All right, well, it's going to be dangerous, but not as bad as I expected, actually. It's about eight of them, I see. Uh, was three on deck four, I think. Uh, tons of cannons. It's, I mean, it's a valuable ship, but you said it was smugglers? Yes? Yeah. Or slaves. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Interesting. Because they're flying a Northwater flag. I mean, they could still be smuggling, of course. Um, they do have a horn, though, for alerting the guards. Uh, once we get up there, we definitely want to remove that as quickly as possible. I'll uh, head straight for it once we get on. Okay. Should we be concerned that the flying the North Water flag. Well, I mean, they are also flying their own merchant guild flag. The Golden Suns, it seems. Okay. But they, I imagine it is a merchant guild of North Water. Helena looks concerned. She's like, yeah, that's probably pretty standard, right? So what are the Golden Suns? Uh, can I roll to see if I have heard of them? Sure. Uh, intelligence or heraldry, if anybody has that. Let's see. I'm so smart. Mm. You have seen the Golden Suns, but it was uh, in the... Remember when you guys went to the the pleasure houses and stuff like that? And I told you oh, across yeah. the street there were like guilds and banking guilds and stuff like that. Uh, I, I would say you've seen this. It, it's a pretty rich guild. Um, yeah. um, so, of course, in turn, quite influential. Yeah, Denachu looks back to the ship with the spyglass, you know, catching the flag, and as he watches it, yeah, Golden Suns. I saw them back near the bathhouses. And it seems to be quite an influential guild. Well, rich as it gets, I imagine. Shuts the little spy glass again as it <sighs> hangs around his neck, uh, kind of tucks it down alongside. It's got this little clip on his arm to hold it so it doesn't jangle all over the place. Helena looks to Peef. Uh, I think she's going to say this quietly to Peef. Um, she says, um, Are you worried that? What if they don't have slaves? Um... <laughs> kinds of people always have slaves, right? Yeah. I guess it'll, that's true. It'll... it'll be okay. Don't worry. Hey, um, Denatri, can I look through that thing? Yes, of course. Have okay. you used a spyglass before? No, but you look through it, right? Yes, you just... here. And he extends it out. It's pretty simple. Okay. And she's gonna look through it, and it's gonna try to find, like, a good kind of point of entry is mainly what she's looking for right now. Excellent. That could be an observation roll. Okay. Nice. Boom. Hey, there you Boom. go. 
am. So the best, uh, sneakiest ways. Um, there is an anchor, and uh, it goes right about the water, and right next to an open portal where you could sneak into this, the second deck of the ship and be below deck. Um, but that would require swimming over to it. Um, other than that, you know that there is a another entrance towards the main part of the ship. But you would have to sneak across the um, kind of plank and hide behind some uh, storage barrels and uh, and crates and stuff that are all netted to the side of the ship. Uh, you'd have to sneak behind them to avoid some people. Yeah. Um, in order to swim in this system, do you need the swimming skill? Or is that just like a helpful extra thing? Yeah, it's a... Your speed, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a helpful extra thing. Um, if 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 there's a dangerous situation like combat or um, or you know if the seas are high or something and rapids or something like that something dangerous then you usually need to roll for it but do the waters look relatively calm they do okay um how do you guys feel about swimming hmm. well, it would be quite tricky on the whole getting out part uh, well no well climb up that and she kind of notes the anchor ah I see what you mean would we all fit through that is it pretty big it's thick <laughs> yeah yeah you could fit through it nice uh, I, I was just thinking I just imagined in my head it's a peef sized hole and he was just thinking with peef I, perspective yeah I can get it it's just like <laughs> everyone else is a little bit too dumpy to get inside peef uh, I thought about that yeah <laughs> no regard wouldn't fit but yeah you guys are all good for sure yeah and, and all right. he kind of chimes in and says um maybe I mean if, you, if you're swimming over there maybe I could like I don't know, come with you, and, like, when we get inside, I can just, like, it sit there be, and just it would wait. Be much easier for you. Yeah. yeah. Just, That'd be good. Yeah, just, I mean, I can swim. I've got <sighs> arms. Legs. You look, you look like a mermaid down there. I know. I'd be... <laughs> she paused. Never mind. Um... Yeah, mermaid. That that's where I was going. I mean, yeah, we're gonna have to go to a bathhouse after this because we're gonna be really salty. I'm so salty. Very salty. Yeah. Okay, so we can do that then. Okay. Let's do it. Let's get those slaves. Let's, let's 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 rescue and liberate those slaves. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're to the rescue. Alina looks at Peef when she says, Rescue their slaves. <laughs> Rose, yeah. how much do I have to pay you to throw some slaves in there? <laughs> Stop. About I don't know about that. You know what's funny is I already oh. planned on rolling randomly to see if uh, there's anything <laughs> like that on there. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, great. It's left oh. up a chance. Crossing my fingers. Oh, man. <laughs> it would be great, though. Bam, slaves. See? <laughs> we told you. Okay. Yeah, right, Donatu. Oh, go Denatri. for it. Yeah. Uh, Donatu would actually, um, before they actually had a cross, he'd pull out this uh, large, uh, sort of like hempen sack. But it, it looks a little bit weird. Um, like it, it has like some kind of excess texture to it. Um, at, which, upon closer inspection, seems to be some kind of waxing or coating, something along those lines. Um, and he'll shove his actual pack into it and seal it up quite taut uh, to keep his main pack dry. Anybody else need to do anything before you go? Jumping in the water? 
seal those packs. Uh, hopefully our garments aren't going to get water damaged, you know. <laughs> um, Emmy's going to tie up her hair. She's some, like, twine that she usually uses, and she kind of ties her hair up and back out of her face and says, All right, let's, um, let's go swimming and climbing. Yeah, if you're not well, well uh, um, he'll probably make sure that his eye patch is secure. <laughs> but other than that, he's <laughs> he's ready to get wet. Oh hey, spicy. All right, you guys are able to find um, a shady place that's not so crowded uh, you do notice a few rich uh, a few rich characters coming uh, out of the tavern uh, laughing loud boisterously and um, uh, where is my where is my bodyguard have you seen him and they, they started laughing I, said, I think you I think he walked off with a whore. And then they go walking down an alleyway. Um, you guys find a nice place to slip down into the water. Uh, down a wooden ladder. Uh, you notice all of the barnacles and the docks are very old here. Uh, slip down into the cold water. Everybody make swimming checks. Target number 25. How no. dare you. <laughs> no, you, you guys, no, you guys <laughs> head on over. Little do we know, there's actually a whirlpool undercurrent. Just I had. <laughs> daggerfish. A swarm of daggerfish. Not the fish. Oh, yeah. You have to roll percentile to see if there's sharks. <laughs> God damn it, Bruce. Uh, shark, sharks don't exist in this world, is yeah. what I heard. Yeah. <sighs> we don't like sharks here. We don't We don't deal with sharks. I remember back when uh, last time I was at a dock town, Azrig uh, fished for sharks by hand. <laughs> Emmy could do that. She could, but we're swimming right now. Why would she fish for sharks? Also true. All right, you guys, as the twin suns are setting, you uh, make it to the make it to the chain. It's a pretty large chain. Runs up all the way to the porthole and to the front of the ship. Uh, you don't see or hear anybody at the moment. Uh, you can see kind of people in the distance uh, at the docks and moving along the docks, but nobody at the bow of the ship. Uh, you should have no problem sneaking up here and at least getting on board, but you do have to climb up the chain. And if you fall, you might alert somebody because a splash like that. Oh no. But it's a chain, um, so it's easy to climb up. Here's the thing. Denatru is going to be going first and he has climbing gear, so there's going to be a nice easy rope hanging down to help. Oh. Nice. So, nice, nice, nice. what are we rolling for that? Is it strength or dex? Climbing is sure dex, I think. Strength. Yeah, dex. Yeah, dex. Uh, everybody can actually add um, a plus three to their roll. And the target number is six. It's pretty easy. Ooh, I rolled low. Yeah, <laughs> Emmy's real good. These fucking D20s, I swear, they're cursed. <laughs> 20s oh, are the best. Man. Can we add the plus three to the modifier? Yeah, when the modifier pops up, just put a three in there and hit enter. And then shall I go ahead and roll stuff? Oh, oh, no! Oh, my God. <gasps> Is there anybody climbing next to P? Oh, wait! Go? Yes! I have helping hands! Yes! Fuck hey. yes. Okay, so... Helping hand. If you are an ally, fails a dex attribute check to grab hold of something or someone, blah, blah, blah. So burn a saga, roll dex check, and add it to the failed result. Okay, cool. You're beautiful, and I love you. Hell Bless. yeah. 
here we go. At seven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I imagine what what's it look like as Peef starts to drop? Yeah, I think she's getting like a bit overly confident climbing it. Um and then her hand just kind of like slips on the chain when she's not expecting it, and she begins like kind of falling back. Um and you notice and just fucking Yeah, and actually he's got the climbing gear and he sees you drop. He's kind of up ahead. He's already got the rope hanging down. But you're like just behind him. And as you drop, he actually keeps the rope uh, kind of spiraled around his leg. So he actually just lets go, catches you, and his leg, uh, he holds it with the two legs and holds it taut and <laughs> until you get back attached to the chain and then pulls himself back up. Nice. Love it. Secret agent, Dana. <laughs> I think we all get up, though. And Athia just barely making it up. Just. <laughs> God damn. Man. <laughs> I know. I'm like, people. holy God. A one and a two. All right. Um. Uh, yeah, just give me five minutes. Five minute break. Cool. Be right. I'm going to get some sherbet. Ooh, sherbet. I'm gonna go pee. Peef. You're gonna take a peef? I love peef.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks. I've been like really craving salt and vinegar fries for the past hour. Salt and vinegar fries? Yeah, well like fries with like vinegar and salt. You can't see my face, but it's disgusting. What? You got like vinegar, vinegar on your fries? Vinegar fries? You mean like malt vinegar fries? Like I, either malt vinegar or vinegar? just yeah, either malt vinegar or just like regular white vinegar on fries, but like that with some salt and then like ketchup. I'm just really wanting that right now, but I can't have it. How dare you be disgusted? <laughs> it just sounds so fucking weird. How? It's just vinegar. Why would you put vinegar on french fries? Because it's delicious. Like salt and vinegar chips. Yeah, except fries. But you don't have like... It's not like you're dipping chips in a pool of vinegar. No, no, no. It's like, no. It's like lightly sprinkled over. Yeah, you just use like a spray bottle or something. Yeah, you just like bloop. And you then... get a fucking mister of vinegar. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, it's a vinegar mister. Because just... otherwise it ends up uneven and you get, you get soggy fries. You want just enough of a spray of it that you get the flavor on yeah. there. I hate this. But, this but it doesn't sog the fries. It You'll end sog. But you can get them really crispy though if you spray them and then put them back in for a few seconds more. Ooh. Okay, here's the thing. Here's uh -huh. the thing. Uh huh. You can convince me that this is good, Aki. <laughs> if, if you sing a song. I'm not gonna sing a song about it. Well, then I <laughs> fucking hate it. It's not song worthy good. Personally, I, I don't either. like it that much. Personally, I'm not a big fan of salt and vinegar on fries because usually, so unless I go so far out of my way, it ends up soggy. <laughs> I mean. So. Salt on fries is a given. Oh, yeah. Salt vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Vinegar. Mm -mm. Or vinegar, yeah. yeah. I mean, salt and vinegar is yummy. Yeah, thank you. Salt, salt and vinegar, vinegar on, fries. on french fries. Done really? right. It's great. But... It, yeah, I've, I've tried it before. It's pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's fucking I'm, just, I'm just craving, like, the fry trucks that used to be around. They had, uh... Effie, are you back? <laughs> Yeah. Hi. I, I, I was thinking about rub. vinegar fries. And what's, I what had to you rub it on my body. It was good. You had to rub vinegar on your body? <laughs> I had to rub it on my body. That's how good it was. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that watermelon. Do that for, the job, for your job. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> mm, some vinegar. 
I expect you to like say an actual reason, but no, because it was so good. <laughs> Oh, no. I thought it was like, oh yeah, I had this condition. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I hope Ghost comes to Horror Nights. I, I'm i just a fish. I have to If you rogue. go to Horror Nights and you smell vinegar, it's it's rogue. Yeah. You're like, oh <laughs> no! I'd run away. See me over in the corner oh, with a chainsaw rubbing it on my nipple. <laughs> just like, <laughs> with like one finger, just de 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 <laughs> Pay over a hundred dollars to be chased around by a vinegar chainsaw massacre. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just like, like lightly misting you with like a vinegar <laughs> spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you are the fry. And then sprinkling, doing the salt bait <laughs> sprinkle of salt on you afterwards after you fall as the, you're screaming. The power of <laughs> chips compels you. <laughs> oh, salt. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what is this? Alright. Are you ready? This fucking episode is so clown <laughs> I love it. I'm ready. Great. Alright, you guys are about to slip into the Twilight Zone. Can you guys see? Yes. Hopefully. I, see. I can see clearly now. Alright, and it is nighttime, unfortunately, and uh, on the inside of the ship, uh, it gently rocks to and fro. Uh, you can see many. Uh, it smells kind of like alcohol in here and. Uh, you know, in salt water, of course, but uh, there's other strange smells like urine, and it's an older ship. Uh, and there does come with some foul smells. Um, and you see many barrels, broken bottles on the ground. Uh, place is very unkept for a rich merchant vessel. Um, you hear talking below in, in the other rooms coming from this passageway over here, if you can see that plane. Yeah, I can, I can uh, see some yeah. guys here and this guy off down here. Yeah, I see everything. Not everything, everything, yeah. but like I see the guys. Cool. Yeah. Uh, cool, yeah. Um, it is lit by lanterns all throughout the ship and stuff and uh yeah good actually i'm glad you can see everything can everybody see all over the place yeah i can see those people that were pinged oh yeah some people some of you can see really well i guess that works some of you with your low light vision and your elf eyes can see very yeah, well yeah i've got full on dark yeah yeah I, I see light. There's a lot of dark spaces, though. I don't know. <laughs> Tanashi is entirely comfortable here. Oh, yeah, I forget. He's a dark elf, so he's actually harder to see. He, I mean, he, like, actually disappears and shit. Yeah, so you right here is pretty much kind of where you slip through. And uh, you guys can put yourselves wherever you like and stuff. But um, uh, you have a perfect hiding space behind these barrels. And, I mean... I mean, you think you could you could hunker down behind them and you know remain unseen for this entire time, and then still be within like screaming range of if something happens. Yeah, that's exactly what Emmy's gonna do. So she comes up to these like boxes and barrels and such, and you see she just kind of like stands behind them. She doesn't like lean on them or anything, but she uh, crouches more than anything, like leaning back on her back legs. She looks up to the others, and then like. She makes a hand motion and she kind of passes her hand in front of her face and then puts it over her shoulder, or like points her finger and puts it over her shoulder and gives a thumbs up and smile. <laughs> yeah, did not you kind of watches the the various hands he tilts, he kind of just tilts his head and nods along <laughs> and mirrors the thumbs up. And, uh, yeah, so. This is the interior of the ship, correct? Like, lower levels. Yes. Anchor pulls in. Okay. So, 
where would our target be? Would it be a level up or down? I assume one way or another we have to get like over here. Yeah. Yeah, if you're looking for... Well, if you're looking for what Helena is and P for looking for, it might be a different target. I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, if you're looking for slaves, um, yeah, you, you're thinking either. Uh, well, there's many places they could have. Actually, could, could I make a perception roll to see if I could hear uh, if it sounds like there's many people on the ship? Like, if there's any, like... Because typically they keep the slaves separately, I assume. Like a listening skill check? Yeah, like, see if I can hear, like... Yeah, definitely. Whether there's, like, a specific level of activity towards one end of the ship, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can bust that out. And you still get your bonus for take point, I guess. Yeah. Nice. Nice roll. Um, you, you believe that, uh, I'll, I'll just whisper this to you real quick. Is that, um, this way? To the south. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Danachi kind of looks back to the others and signals, you know, um, you know, one, two, three, four, and then kind of a maybe sort of signal with the hand, maybe five, and then points off that direction past the ones that are visible. Um, kind of off that direction, you know, further down. Uh, but that, you know, there's really the main three there. Uh, so that way everybody knows. Let me see. And if I, uh, uh, pats you on the shoulder, Emmy, and she says, are you going to be right here? She nods. Kind of whispers back, yeah, um, I'll be here. So, if you all make it make it through and you find the people, then we can just leave the same way. Maybe, um, we can leave them out this way. But uh, I'll be here unless you need me. Smiles and and um, nods. She looks over to uh, uh, Denatrio and. Uh, kind of a worried look on her face and then to uh, Dre as well and when she looks over to Dre she says um, well should we take those two out I'll be sure it's just them Denatru kind of looks off that direction and kind of checks the other one and signals yes and then uh, uh, well I guess we're, we're covered enough that you can actually whisper and stuff uh, yes, it seems like there's about three of them just close. But beyond there, there's more. Not many, maybe a couple. I guess we should start sneaking forward. If... Well, if... Peef... Uh, you're good with the bow, right? Peef? Sorry, Peef's I was a few seconds to grab something. What did you say no to problem. Peef? Oh, um, you're good with the bow. Yeah. And based on what I saw last time, we got in some trouble together, I think you could probably take that one out quite swiftly. Um, giving the rest of us time to take down the two before they can really act. And of oh. course if you don't make that one you could go for the others right after. Damn it, I miss uh 
Ellard's poisons. I'm out of them. Well, yes, if, uh, Peef, if you could go for that one there, and then we'll take the others. Okay. Give me a moment. I have, uh, would I have, uh, had time to buy those, uh, custom traps I wanted made? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Definitely, because you're walking around the city and stuff, yeah. Yeah, now he has a lot of money right now. <laughs> um... Yeah, because he wanted to have some, uh, like, custom-made traps, basically, by a local blacksmith and stuff, uh, or tinkerer, or combo of thereof. Um, but they're basically kind of, think like a bear trap, but instead instead of, like, closing, it um, kind of springboards a large, uh, like, uh, metal stake kind of up towards your leg or whatever it would be there. But mm -hmm. it's kind of pronged in two at the end, so it wouldn't, you know, just glance off something it sticks because both prongs would hit either angle so yes. it's kind of like a double pronged like scorpion tail that uh on kind of a metal arc uh that just springs up when it's triggered and so he's gonna go up and try and set one kind of like right here if he can so like in case somebody comes running into the door <laughs> exactly go away. okay um so i think Can't move in one. Peef is gonna Force. pour her bane salve into her quiver and move up here. Did did uh did he give everybody more than one? I think he just gave Ineth one poison. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah. I thought I saw a poison on your character um, when I was looking at it today. Uh, uh, Dre, I don't know if you still have it or if it was just a note that was written down, uh, or even um, if you want to if if you want to use it or not. I don't know. But I went ahead and rolled. Still. I think the poison nice. was from the last time we played. Okay. Uh, Peef, can you make a stealth check too? Anybody that's going to move up to that location. Oh yeah, don't forget oh, the yeah, target yeah. number reduced by one for everybody. Damn. Nice. 20 exploded. Alright. And it's going to creep up too. And it's probably... Shit. I want to mess you guys up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to creep up. Helena actually starts to look through those crates over there. <laughs> okay. And she's going to try to do it quietly, so she's going to use her steel skill. Um... After she does that, I'll go ahead and try and set that trap down. Did, did you give everybody a bonus to stealth? Plus one, right? Yep. Plus, uh, it reduces the target by one, essentially, but it's just, yeah, same oh, as okay. plus one. Works. Can you give me sight on someone up there? Because I'm going to be chilling back here, and I'm not going to be able to see oh, In the dark! <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, hey, Helena, what are you doing? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> what you doing? What doing? What doing? Nah, She's Emmy's just chilling back here. Yeah, she's looking my... for slaves in these boxes. My... Looking for slaves in the boxes. She's looking through them. She's not finding anything. She says, oh, if there's food in these boxes. Ew, there's a bug right there. You know, some some different people think that bugs are delicious, and I don't know who those people are, but they're probably wrong. How do you get ants all over your ship? Um... They usually come in with uncles. Oh. <laughs> ah. oh, <my. laughs> right. I got a plus two to all of charisma checks now. <laughs> I'll go ahead and roll traps if that's cool. Yeah. And I will uh, 
spend a is it a, it's a frenzy for Trapper to add a d6. These guys are talking about something. Oh my god! <laughs> my lord! Oh my lord! That is obscene! <laughs> ben! So the target number. Ben got an 8, was the highest on perception, so all your target numbers were 9. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody rolled lower though, did they? <gasps> no, oh, Dre. no did. Dre actually got a 9, but, but because he had plus 1. Because the plus one plus did one. it? Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly saved it. Oh. Fucking great. And what? I thought it wouldn't be enough to make a difference, but there it is. I love it. I love it. How would that happen? What do you, what do you think? That... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing for Infiltrate is um, it's as long as the scout leads and uh, uses hand signals. So he's been teaching hand signals since he's met everyone. So... Um, Idralon, you're you're kind of about to stick, take this one step near these cabbages here, and as you're just about to take a step down, one of them just happens to roll with the ship, and it's about to crunch under your foot, and you just see the hand signal shoot up, kind of like this big uh, sweep to the left of stop what you're doing right now, you know, and you stop with the you know. Uh, ball of your foot just above it and your heel down uh, before you crunch down on it. <laughs> if that works. <laughs> I think that's perfect. Um, and uh, you can hear Ben, this guy over there, who's dressed in pretty much uh, pretty common clothing. He does have uh, some studded leather on him. And he's talking to this other guy, an older human. Uh, and he says, they want me to feed the damn thing. And uh, the guy's like, that's horrid. What does it eat? It's like, apparently it's flesh and blood and that's it. Well, don't get near it. Don't get your arm caught. <laughs> and he says, I think we should just kill him and be done with it. Chop his head off. Burn the damn body. Throw his ashes overboard. Well. You best listen to the Templar on this one. We'll get our coin. And we'll head out. Once the deal is done, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Alright. I think at that point, Dinatru kind of looked to the others and, you know, give the signal for all quiet, down low, don't move until my signal. And uh, he'll signal to uh, Inith to whisper to Peef for him to let Peef know to shoot the guy there, over there when the trap goes off, right? Just have the boat ready and shoot him when the trap goes off. Um, and once we're all set and down and ready, uh, Donatri will have uh, his new crossbow loaded and ready for a shot. And he will actually kind of like tap there, like send one of the little uh, cabbages or potatoes from over there or something, you know, out onto the floor here. Uh, to lure these guys into the traps. Well, trap, and then we just jump them. <laughs> but hopefully that eliminates one of them or comes close. It's going to be pretty fearsome. Should I make a uh, conceal? Hello? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Oh. Um, so you're going to go first and. Uh, yeah, make a conceal. Alrighty. Yeah, he wants to lure him to the trap without, you know, being revealed. I mean, 
As long as they don't get discovered overall, it's gonna work out. I got my wood. Hey. Now what do you oh, do? Oh, and that's actually 26 because of my uh, nice kid. Yeah. All right, so what did you do there? Yeah, so he kind of uh, tosses maybe one of the potatoes from over here or something, you know, and lets it kind of roll to here. Um, and then another one shortly after to kind of get their attention and get one of them walking over. All right. It seems like uh, the older guy is starting to walk away and uh, Ben sees it. This younger one uh, sees the fruit and uh, starts to walk over there. And Denatri will signal to Idralon and Inith to go for uh, the one that is that direction. Uh, once uh, this guy hits by the trap, you know, and Peef's going for the others. This guy has a question on his face as he's walking closer. What's Peef doing? Or uh, Dre? Um, Peef will stick to the plan and will shoot Neil Arbo and is going to do a dead eye shot. Okay, so this has happened simultaneously. And Dre, are you going to take out the other one? Or did you want NF2? Are, aren't we waiting on the trap? It's pretty much as, as he steps in the trap, Peef is going to shoot that guy and you and Inneth are hopefully... Oh yeah, as, as soon as the trap goes off, he'll he'll go for Jora. Okay. Sweet. So, I've got the damage. It should... Oh man, this is going to be convenient. Yeah, roll it. Alright. Uh, is he... Let me make one more perception check as he gets up here, but... Yeah, it's 41 for the trap itself. Yeah. And it deals... 51, and uh, the 41, I mean, the target was like 5, so it's at least times 2, right? Is it times 3 damage? So 153? Nice. So, this guy, tell me tell me what it looks like as he's taken out. Yeah, so, the guy kind of steps up, and he's got it double staged, right? So there's a little tripwire just in front, and the guy catches it with his foot perfectly and ends up falling face first onto the panel that triggers the trap and that kind of double pronged spike shoots up and basically pops right into the cap of his skull and even Denatru is kind of shocked by it as he sees it as this guy is just there's just silence there's just a sickening crack and kind of the seeping sound and then nothing Nice. And Peef. Um, I'm just gonna do a dead eye shot. Um Nice. Uh target number is gonna be seven or higher because he's behind a, a crate. Okay. Um Oh, and um No, no, you're good. Uh well, oh, actually make a concealment check, sorry. Joro's old. <laughs> Target number was four. <laughs> yes. We're gonna find out these two are just some innocent nobody. Well, no, they were just they talking are. about the demon or something. Jedi <laughs> <laughs> right. is plus two. It is. Okay. And you can, uh, no, no, you can't. That is aiming. Sorry, go ahead. Unless you have the talent that makes it. <gasps> a critical fucking hit. Damn. That's a okay. hit. Back up. Yo. Yeah, Emmy's just like playing cards by herself. She's playing <laughs> solitaire back here. Oh my god. Um, Dude, this was a ninja crew. Wait, Emmy's does here Inif for emotional support. Does Enneth have a bow? Ineth has throwing knives. It, it would make more sense for her to do it if they're trying yeah. to be sneaky, because, like, Ixtrelon's going to have to, like, approach the guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think Ineth would open. Because, yeah, the idea is that these two will be down, and that's the only one left in the room afterwards. 
Um, so if we can take him down, I, there shouldn't be anyone else. Keith, that'll know Keith that. knows that's not the case, which is why I did a dead eye shot and not oh, full yeah. combo. Um, well, yeah, there's more, but they're they're a ways past, right? Because I think they're through a wall. There's one right here. So how did you kill Leo? Leo? Um, Peef kind of comes around the corner, uh, sees Jorah there, but is remaining hidden from him, um, pulls back the bowstring and aims at Neil. And as she's doing that out of the corner of her eye, she also sees this guard, um, she knows if she kills Neil, the guard is probably going to notice. And so um, she focuses heavily and fires the shot. It goes straight through Neil's head, and she quickly readjusts and is going to try to take out the guard as well. Um, and we'll burn two Frenzy to do a three-hit combo. I didn't realize. I thought that was a wall for some reason. I didn't realize. It no, I think it's like a. Yeah, it actually goes up. It's an upper deck. Yeah, kind of a. Okay. The middle area is just like an open lower, drops down to a lower third. Yeah, for like storage and such. Yeah, that makes sense. And for this one, I'm gonna use Seeker as well. Sweet. Um, nice. This guy will get to defend, but um, go for it. Come. You fucking got this, beefers. Oh my god! Yes! What? What, what is going in a row? Oh my lord! Holy shit, <gasps> that's going to be power uh, six. Yeah. So yeah. that's basically three crits in a row, by the way. Oh, it is. I also crit Fuck. on that concealment check. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Keith. Keith is a master sneaker. Power six. So many ones. <laughs> All right, so he's still alive because he had 181 hit point. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. No. How do you how do you kill that guy? Um, just very quickly, uh, kind of re aims, grabs three arrows, brings them back, lets them fly. They kind of fly over um, this. Fuck. What? What's this called? Uh, banister? Banister, thank you. Flies over the banister just barely, and one gets him in the chest, one in like the stomach, and one in the neck, and he just falls. He barely had time to, he just like saw Neil get hit, and he was like just finding out where it came from too, before he, uh, he dies. And uh, Dre, um, would you tell Ineth? That you're like, maybe you should do this. What would you say? Can you repeat that? It, my internet seems to have uh, dropped that what, up. What would you say to Ineth to uh, to uh, actually like get her to sneak up and kill the guy instead? So is, she, is she just going to sneak up, or? I think. Um, was it supposed to be I mean, her? It, it doesn't matter. The, the whole idea is just get rid of him. <laughs> Whichever right. one of you does it, just uh, get rid of him quick, quickly and quietly as possible. I think Ineth was waiting for you uh, to do it, but if you want her to. Oh. Well, I mean, hey, if, if uh, everybody's taken out and it looks like a, a clear path, then... Um... Yeah, he'll have to he'll have to like melee though. So Yeah, that's Yeah, he'll um Oops. I think it takes seven hexes to get up to there. Okay. But then okay. he'll try to stabby stab with his sword. Yeah, because this is all in ambush round, right? So 
would you you'd get the sneak attack bonus yeah yeah you yeah. could uh, you could try to uh, just do a stealth stealth roll okay just run up like super quick and quiet yeah go for it. we'll see <laughs> I already rolled his perception which was Ooh. five five is oh wait target. but you have plus one Oh, I do? Right? Yeah, yeah but all, the, target all the targets are reduced by one, yeah. But the, but the uh, tie goes to the defender, which yeah, is Jorah. Have... Oh, I don't think Can I, I think still I try to kill him? Or yeah, kill him? sure. He just notices just as you're... He sees, I would say, he probably sees the arrow hit Neil, and then the other guy go down, and he's like, oh shit. And his eyes widen as Dre is coming up behind him, and then he turns. Probably the, the shadow from the lantern or something catches his eye. Uh, just as he's turning, you still have your attacks, though. You got to drop on him. So you can do. Uh, um, you did you ever get combo attack? I do have combo attack. Yay! Well, you can either do three heavy attacks, or you can do a combo attack for four and then a heavy attack, however you want to split it up. You can do a I'm combo not attack familiar with how combo attack works. Combo is oh, um, you can use all of your actions and uh, do a six hit combo if you really wanted to, or you you can split it up however you want. So you could do a three hit combo and then another three hit combo, uh, or you could do a four hit combo and then burn two frenzy into a heavy attack. You know, um, with frenzy you have six hits because you got the dual weapons and you got the fury fighter and you got two blades. So you can get a total of six actions. Okay. Um, and a heavy attack is two. Uh, quick ones are one. And combo is whatever you want to combo it. You know what I mean? However many actions you want to combine to make it uh, that attack. So it's totally up okay. to you. Okay. Um, well, I do like my heavy attacks. And um, so, geez. <laughs> Yeah, ah. you, can do, you can do three heavy attacks if you like. Alright, yeah, three heavy attacks. Sweet. So this will be the first one. All which right. is two actions, but just click on attacks. And I think uh I really think um Wanderers uh ads made it easier. I don't know if you guys like it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wander's been doing an amazing job with all this. Yeah. You too. I'm going to give him... All right, so he dodges the first one. Second one. Here we go. Got him. And the damage would be with your broadsword and power two. Oh, God. There you go. That actually uh, fucks him up. That causes a trauma. <laughs> so, because he is down to. Whoops, sorry. And as far as he's down to. F All right. Uh, can you click your hit location button? What's the target up on the top? Your little buttons up top. Oh head. fuck! And then click on the head there on the trauma table. Oh my god! Jesus. <gasps> oh my god! Loss of both eyes. And then, if you want to burn two frenzy and finish them off, you can. Trade yeah, I was gonna do three thing. anyway. So yes. Oh, but he does. Wait, bleeding. So twenty five percent to lose both, but you're losing one permanently regardless. It says, uh, what is it? Because he's stunned. He takes. Does he take three d six HP per round? He like, does. does. He do it right now. Oh. He does. That would be next round. Oh well, f f he's gonna die before next round anyway. And you oh, stab out his eyes. Oh my he god. He sliced across both of his eyes. <laughs> Dre or Dre's like, I have one eye now. You have none. <laughs> Ultimate fear. <laughs> uh, so you can burn two frenzy and finish him off if you want to, or just leave him there. Oh my god! 
So both right. eyes are fucked. One's just gone forever. Pretend, oh, yeah, God. yeah. All right. Well, he is stunned is and it a, blind. He's gonna roll a, a D100, see if he's got both eyes gone. Yeah. Ah, oh, darn. <laughs> Still has one. Bastard. I mean, if he, if he survives, one might recover. If he can pay for the treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Done the end blind partially. Um, that gives him a seven hey, to dodge. He got him. Dodge. Go ahead and damage for power two again. This guy is dead. All right, what's it look like? So, um, Ichthrilon, uh tries to sneak up, but Jorah turns around, and as he does so, it quickly dodges his first attack. But he co comes through with his other broadsword and just slices up uh, along his face, which goes right through his eyes. And uh, from there, he just um, ends up stabbing him in the chest and letting him slide off with gravity. I want to say uh, this guy stumbles for a minute and then he, he falls on the ground right here. And... Uh probably be pretty shocked but the uh i mean <laughs> the attack taking almost taking both of his eyes uh you can see the blood is just pouring out of him out of his face and then you hear a startling growl come from that that hole there and it's just really loud and it's <sighs> and you can see this hairy hand grab the uh wrap around the this part of the cage there or it drops down below and it's and it grabs a hold of Jorah and pulls him towards it and you can hear his arm breaking as he's like snapping the arm and trying to pull it and starts chewing on it something down there can Peef go look yeah definitely you guys can all we're out of combat Ichthrilon yeah, kind true. of watches the like the whole thing unfold. He's kind of uh, transfixed on Jora, especially after like slicing the eyes. <laughs> that kind of bothers him just a little bit, and then just, he he doesn't really move, especially after seeing him be pulled in through this hole and obviously being crunched on. Yeah, Donachi's got the crossbow up uh, as he kind of steps out here kind of flicks that little trap back up, you know, and onto his pack again. And as he looks here, he's like, what is it? I, I heard them talking about it. And it looks this way. It should be all of them, but we'll have to be careful. They, they said it eats flesh, but I don't know Peef is kind of like crawling up to the edge of it and like peeking down. It's Nachi. He's kind of leaning way up and over, kind of with the crossbow nearby. Rogue, what is it? <laughs> Sorry, let's meet it again. It's, um, it's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> You see this large, I would say almost eight foot tall, uh, horned beast, uh, humanoid, and he's chewing on it. You'd probably know what the Minotaur is. Yeah. Um, and you can see, like, he, he's crunching into the guy's arm and chewing on it. And then he looks over towards you, and his eyes get really wide. Hi. And then he, he smiles when you say hi to him. He says, Are you here to get me out? Yes. What happened? Were they trying to, like, sell you or something? He nods. Yeah, I don't like that. Um... 
Is there like, is this just kind of like a cage with only entry from the top? Is there a way to get the top off or? Yeah. Is there also, is there anything in the other one? No, it's one big cage under there. Goes to the same spot. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can uh, you can open it from outside with locks, locked latches. What's your name? He uh, he stops for a moment and uh, like he's trying to think of it and says. Petronius. Teeth reaches into her pocket and pulls out the watermelon piece she had earlier <laughs> that she didn't like and spat out. You want some watermelon? Uh, no. Petronius doesn't like fruit. Yeah, me neither. And she just kind of tosses it over her shoulder. Well, let's, let's get you out of here. Um, yeah, it's an Atrius turret. How, how does it open again? Sorry. There's some latches. Yeah, you can slide it open. He points in the, the direction of the south, and he says, There are more on the ship. A wizard. We must leave. Wizard. Oh, you don't want to kill them? You do want to kill them? I mean, slavers are bad. He is dangerous. He put me to sleep with his magic. They would use me as a gladiator. Here. And, uh, yeah, he'll, uh, actually, is, is it locked or is it, I assume it probably is. He'll, he'll yeah, run you over can... here and check now. See if there's uh, any keys there. Uh, yeah, you find a key on this guy. Yeah, so um, he... not that guy, but, uh, Jora. Hmm. Yeah, so he'll take a moment, you know, figure everything out and unlock it and I imagine it's quite a big creaky sound as he opens the thing and uh, he'll kind of look around the cage to Emmy uh, Emmy uh, uh, you come here for a moment yeah um I mean it, it looks clear right and she's like looking left and right if she slowly kind of creeps up um are, is it is it good are we, are, are we yes home? we're gonna help this fellow out but could you come here for a moment i had an idea yeah yeah of course what is it can you pick this up what is it points to the cannon uh emmy's gonna look at it can emmy pick this up if we got one on the car that's pretty heavy let me see no, <laughs> please please check how much do cannons weigh? <laughs> Evil ship cannon. How much is the head weigh? 8,000 pounds? No. <laughs> no, um... Oh my god, 8,000? Oh, Jeez. it's the big fucking cannon, isn't it? Yeah, she like looks yeah. down at it, uh, she kind of moves over to these balls. Um, and she's like, I, I can carry some of these. I can't- that? I mean, I don't even think Norgar could carry that. <laughs> I don't even think Peef can carry that. That's heavy. Everybody make a perception check, please. It's like, I... <laughs> There's only certain times I want to blow my back out, and it's not for this. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I could, couldn't help but think if I had one on the carts. <laughs> Ennis looks at a Dre, and uh, she's like twirling her daggers. She's like, Are you alright? Yeah. She looks over at Jora. She's like, a pretty clean kill. Mm, that could have gone better. 
Mine would have been all messy and taken several of my blades. I don't have my poisons, you know. Thank you. Well, uh, just contributing to the the calls. <laughs> um, he wipes the blood off of his uh, blades before putting them back in their sheath. I think. Uh, I think she kind of noticed uh, Dre's look as she was walking up. Uh, sorry, what was Denatri saying? Oh, I was distracted by Emmy's big balls. <laughs> yeah, she's holding two big balls um, <laughs> now. Kind of a little bit under, like, kind of like just above where his stomach is, like her lower ribs and kind of holding them there. And she's like, maybe I can, like, throw these at people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That might work. It's a shame. Could you imagine one of these on top of the garden cart? <laughs> ah, and Emmy... She's, you could use she's it as a vase. I mean, maybe. I, I don't... I mean, I, I don't really condone weapons in a garden at all. I mean, the kids, you know, do stuff there. Yes, but imagine morning glory growing out of it. Um, I mean, that, that could like work. Like water. Oh, that'd be pretty. <laughs> Everyone, we need to go now. Wait, why, why? Why, why? Huh? Wait, what? Sorry? It sounds like people have heard something. Oh, shoot. Oh. Yes. Uh, Here, let me let me help you with the, this door thing. Uh, where, Can someone open it? I'll lift. Yes, here's the key. It's It should be unlocked on your side. And she, uh, when it's unlocked, Emmy will lift it, get the minotaur out. Uh, what's his name? Expecto Patronum? That guy. Patronius. Oh, Patronius. <laughs> that is what, exactly what it's like. Patronius, can you swim? Oh. Um. If, if you need, you can, like, ride on my um, back. I'm I can try to carry I'm not sure you. he's what? going to fit. We'll just, oh. We can shove him yeah. through. Come on, let's go. Yes, let's go. Come the on. wizard has a sleep spell that will really suck. Emmy <laughs> <I mean, laughs> <laughs> I mean, looks at her as they're going, and she's like, "Hey, do you want to join a caravan? Do you like gardening?" Yes, yes I will join your caravan. Do you want to garden with me? <laughs> Can you grow meat in the caravan? I mean, we talked about it before. We talked about, you know, meat, watermelons, but those are just turkeys. Um, we can get you some. You can turkeys. go hunting with me and we can get meat. Yeah, and then you can garden with me sometimes. Elena, did you find anything? She, she comes over and runs up. She says, <laughs> I no, I didn't find anything. And she's like putting pouches in her, in her uh, <gasps> satchel. What a little pest. I mean, I found a couple of things. Oh, perfect. But um, there was nothing really great. That's okay. We found the great thing. And she, like, pats Petronius on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we... We, um, saved... We saved the person. We... We we did our mission. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> He's out. Emmy will wait to last. Uh... <laughs> before jumping out and uh as you see uh helena is like second to last just before emmy you see a few gold coins rolling out of her pouch and falling on the deck she'll and, take uh, she'll like take them and she's like you forgot these i'll just give them back to you later and she'll like put them in her own pouch <laughs> to get back to helena later <laughs> and with that you guys escaping into the water i think we'll end it there perfect, perfect. That was amazing. <laughs> With all of us getting wet, 